So if you want to catch some big carp, the margins is the place. I've come here today to do a video to show you all about it. So if you're interested, carry on watching. So bait choice when fishing for these big carp, personally, I like to keep it simple. Now, as you can see, probably see on my side tray, I've got two main feed baits. So my first one, and my main bait, if I can use it, is ground bait. And what I've got is some green swim stim and marine halibut. This is dynamite mix. I've mixed it nice and heavy, put it for a riddle. That's perfect for catching these carp. Now, I use the ground bait for actually attracting the fish. This is the important bit about this bit. Now, I'm going to feed up to two or three kilos of this. Like I'm going to put some bait in, but this is the attractor. This is what actually brings the fish into the peg. Now, what I call my actual feed baits is what the fish are going to be sort of eating on the bottom. So the ground bait is going to get washed everywhere, but that's the main attractor. That's what these carp come into. So my number one feed bait, I'll always feed is some micro pellets. Now, as in ground bait, it's a great attractor for fish, but it actually keeps something on the bottom. So when them fish come in the peg, they've actually got a bit of food content to eat. And this is me or the bait, I'll definitely feed my ground bait. Now, my sort of other feed baits and hook, hook bait choice will depend on what the sort of fish are in my peg. So, for instance, if I've got a lot of silverfish in my peg, then I'll have to feed corn. So literally, just got some, some of the average sweet corn there. And then literally, all I'll do is I'll put like a pinch in like that with my micros and my ground bait. And that'll be hopefully enough to hold them carp. However, my favourite baits tend to be sort of natural baits, so dead maggots and worms. So, my number one bait has always been dead maggots. And again, I'll feed just a pinch of this with my micros and my ground bait. But my sort of two, whether I feed maggots or corn depends what's in my swim. So, if I've not got any small fish issues, such as roach, perch, things like that, I'll always go, hopefully go for sort of maggots, because I think that's a better bait, if I'm honest. But say if we've got problems with little fish, then we've got to use the corn, because obviously the maggots attract the silver fish. Now, obviously, coming on to the worms now, this is not actually a bait of feed, this is just purely for hook bait. And two great big dendrobinas like this on the hook can real be a winner because it's heavy bait, nice and visual, perfect for their margin carp. So there's obviously a lot of baits you can use, but my bait choice is quite simple. I know exactly how to use it, and that's what I use to get these results. Right, so rig choice. Now, when you're catching these big weights of carp, it's vital to get your kit right. So by this I mean you need strong and durable tackle. Now, it's no good saying fishing like, 014, 016, anything like that, because when you get a spell in the, these match to catch these carp, the match winning fish. So you've got to make the most of it, like I keep saying. So strong and durable tackle, which I'll run through now. So elastic choice, I've got a blue zip. So it's nice and soft on the strike, but in a few strips of the puller kit, it's gonna power up and then fish are gonna pop up, meaning I can do big weights quickly. Coming on to the main line, I've got 022. As you can imagine, when I'm catching these big carp, I need big steps up every line. So I've got 022 line, it's not going to let me down. It means I can, when I've got a spell to catch these fish, I'm not afraid of pulling them, getting out quick, and I'm going to be confident in my care and it's not going to let me down. Float wise, it depends on depth. So anything under two foot, I'll go for a 4B14 Fiore. Anything sort of over that, I'll go for a 4B16. And that's just purely enough weight, to keep enough weight in the rig to keep the bait still. So over two foot, 4B16, two foot and under 4B14, that seems about right. Now, the other good thing about these fury floats, they've got a two and a half mil tip. So when you get a lot of indications from these big carp swirling around, it just means it's not going to get dragged under easy. So I'll have plenty of bristle out. You'll get a nice positive bite. And that way you're going to hook more fish in the mouth. Shotting pattern, I've literally just got a bulk on top of the hook. Obviously, it depends what size float you use. So normally on a 4x14, it's about six number nines. And then on a uh, 4x16, it's about five number eights. I literally just have that on top of me, on the top of my hook link loop. Dead simple, no messing about. Like I say, if you use strung rigs or anything like that, you're just going to cause yourself foul lookers. You want to get the rig in nice and fish straight away to avoid them foul lookers. Hook link choice. Now, for carp, I actually go a bit different. A lot of people use three or four inch hook links nowadays, but I tend to actually fish a six inch. Now, people might be wondering why, but I actually think it gives a bit more sort of natural presentation to the bait. So by this, I mean, you can actually lay a bit more line on the bottom if you have to. And I think I actually like the bait to waft around because I think these carp have been caught a lot and I like something to look a bit more natural. But on the opposite sort of scale of it, scale, I'd fish a four inch or three inch for sort of small carp and F1s. This is just mainly for big carp. So six inch hook link, nice and simple, and it does the job. So when it comes to the feeding, getting the correct amount of feed for margin fishing is so important. 
If you don't feed enough bait, you're not going to draw enough fish in. If you feed too much bait, you're going to draw too much fish in and have a nightmare of fire lookers and too many indications. So basically I've got three different pots of sort of menu for margin fishing for carp. I've got, it's, these are actually guru pots. I've got the actual, it's actually a paste pot. Now you're probably thinking, well, I'm using a paste pot, but it takes a nice amount of bait, sort of bait. Um, I'll use that in situations where I don't feel like I've got to feed so much. So if there's plenty of fish in the peg, I'll actually probably use that because obviously you want to sort of feed to how many fish you're getting. So the more, the more bait you need to feed is way skewing when you need to draw the fish in. If you've got loads of fish there already, you don't need to actually feed that much. So yeah, so that's the, uh, the Guru Paste Pot, the first sort of pot. The second one, it's actually the Guru XL Pot. Now, when these first come out, I'm not going to lie, I thought these were a bit of a gimmick and I thought they're more just sort of used to clip on your pole if you want to sort of sort of feed your peg really, if you haven't got a cuffing kit or anything like that. But after playing around with them, it re really has transformed my margin fishing. Now, I think the reason it's good is because you can feed a, a large volume of bait and set your rig before any carp can sort of come in. Obviously, if you use that, you've your big pot, the sort of, you've got to come back and put your, your bait on your rig and go in again. And it just seems like sometimes you can lead to foul hookers. So by having that in, you can set a little trap, get your rig in, it seems to work really good. So if you've not had a go on one of them, give that a go. Then we come on to the big pot. Now I normally use this to kick the peg off. So normally 15 minutes to half an hour before I'm looking to actually fish on, on my line, I'll uh, give it one of these. Now, as you can see, it's probably like a 250 mil pot. So I can put plenty of bait in here. So, but I'll try to use kinder pots if I can, because I sort of feel like you can set the trap better and you can sort of follow your rig in and it sets the perfect trap. But if needs be, if them two are not working, I'll fill these up and give it plenty of bait and put me rigging straight after. So you've got three choices of pots there. Have a mess about and see what's better on the day and you shouldn't go too far wrong. Right, so that's enough waffle. Let's try and catch some fish. So about 20 minutes ago, I put one of my big pots in. So if you use my cupping kit, I put a big pot of ground bait in and I've left it about 20 minutes. So now's the time to go on it. Sort of about half two in the afternoon. This method always generally works better in the afternoon, sort of between one o'clock and five o'clock all the way up to the evening. So afternoon's always better because some fish want to come in. So like I was speaking about pot size and feeding earlier, I'm going to start off on my largest pot. So that's just the XL Guru uh, CAD pot. In terms of feeding, I'm just going to feed a pinch of dead maggots. Not too many at all because obviously I'm going to use dead maggots on the hook to start with. So I don't want to feed too many hook baits to give them too many options. I'm going to give a good pinch of micro pellets. And like I was speaking about earlier, that's some food content for them fish to eat. And that basically I'm gonna fill the rest of my pot up with ground bait. So I'm gonna get a real good big handful of ground bait. I'm gonna cram it in my pot and fill it to the brim. And I've actually mixed this ground bait up nice and wet. So when you squeeze it, it's nice and heavy and it's gonna sink fast to the bottom. So you can see there's a lot of bait there, but hopefully I'm gonna try and read out what's going on now. So in terms of actually where I'm fishing as well, I've got a nice sort of hole, it's probably like, five meters where I can see me float and it in terms of plumbing up as well this is really important it's a nice flat bottom so when I plumb up to the left and the right it's nice and firm it's dead flat perfect for what I want if you've got rocks and boulders and stuff and it feels all uneven try and go away and try and find somewhere flat because I think it makes a big difference so when it actually comes to laying the rigging as well I'm going to flick my rig into the lake and I'm going to feed I'm going to feed probably six inches to the right of where I'm fishing now you're probably thinking why am I do doing this but I don't want actually too many fish near where my hook bait is because this is going to cause liners. So what I try to do to start with, I'll feed sort of six inches to the right of where I'm fishing and work out what's going on. And basically I've just plumbed up tight to the bank as tight as I can get and this is hopefully going to avoid fire lookers. So I'll probably give this five minutes. If it's not had a bite, I'll refeed and work out what's going on from here. I might change my hook bait. I might do something to try and get a bite. So say if I caught a few perch, I'll feed sweet corn rather than the maggots and things like that really. But another good thing as well with sweet corn, which I should mention is, if you have got a lot of fish in your peg, you can actually switch to sweet corn rather than the maggots. And so now this is not necessarily for the nuisance fish, but for the weight of the bait. So because it's heavy, when them fish come in and waft the bait everywhere, it's going to remain where it's where it sank because of the weight of the bait, where maggots will fly everywhere because they're light. So that's another thing you've got to think about when margin fishing is the weight of your bait. In base, yeah, once your rig's in, don't, you don't really want to lift and drop it because you're going to spook fish and everything like that. So it's just a case of setting your trap and being nice and patient. I've had a couple of liners now. 
missed a bite. But again, that could be perch. Just drag your rig in, tie it into the bank, and then set your trap. And just be patient, really. Don't strike any, any liners or anything like that. And that was a, probably a bit of a perch bite, which you, you can get to start with. Well, when you don't know what's there, you can get a few of that, but don't sort of be too hesitant, hesitant to change. Like I say, me, he floats nice and tight in the bank, got plenty of bristles showing, and then we trap set. And you're probably thinking, what would I do if this doesn't work? If, if I know this fish there, I'm not catching it. Simple, change hook baits. So there we go, nice positive bite, and we're into a carp. Now, sat there nice and patient, I had quite a lot of liners, which you do when you're margin fishing, but having that two and a half mil bristle and being nice and patient, waiting for a proper bite. And you see, nice, proper nice fish as well. You can see that as well, that blue zip, you can get them under control nicely, and if you fit to the puller kit, you can tame them in. And a proper edge fish, it's got to be eight or ten pound at least. Having a good scrap in the net. Slipping back, we'll try and catch another one. So we've just caught a carp down the margins. Now obviously all that ground bit and stuff I've fed has just been disturbed. Now this is the real important bit of resetting your trap. So what I'm going to do again is I'm going to put my maggots on. And actually six maggots is best. So I'm just going to put six maggots on. Another thing as well, uh, I'd like to talk about a bit more is my uh, hook link choice. Now this obviously depends on the sort of baits and size of fish you're fishing for, but because we're fishing for massive carp today, I've got 022 hook link and a size 12 SLWG hook. Now if you, obviously if you, it'd be the same process with how you feed and stuff like that, but obviously your sort of bottom end tackle comes sort of what fish you're fishing for. So if you're fishing for smaller fish, something like a 14 to 019 or 017 would be perfect. So that's the sort of sort of kit I'd use. So again feeding wise, pinch of maggots, good pinch of micros. So like I was saying, that's the sort of food content in your peg. And then I've got the ground bait as the attraction. So a big dollop of ground bait like that. Another thing is as well, it's no good rushing, like take your time and get everything perfect. Because if you rush in, spill bait everywhere, you're gonna have carp everywhere. It's simple, I'm gonna put your bait in like that. Again, about six inches to the right. I'm gonna put your bait nice and tight in the bank. And again, I'm getting plenty of indications. But that, another vital important thing when you can is to actually have that float almost touching the bank because it's gonna cut down the liners and far lookers. As you can see again, we're straight into another one. And to be fair, that's how simple it can be when you get it right, like the feeding's right, presentation's right, everything's right. So it's making life nice and easy. Another nice cart from the glee. But like I say, dead maggot's been good today, but if, it's, if they're not taking it, change your hook baits. Double worm, one or two bits of corn can be brilliant. It's all about trial and error, so find something that's right on the day. The nice fish. Probably five or six pound. Probably six pound actually. So that's two fish I've caught down the margins. Now I just want to explain about something when it comes to depth. So every margin is not going to be the same. You're going to have some margins where it's going to be under two foot and some are going to be like well over two foot. My perfect margin depth is between 18 inches and two foot, which we've got today. Nice flat bottom, absolutely perfect. But obviously every peg's not gonna be like that. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna sort of run you through what I'd do if it's under sort of that perfect depth and over that perfect depth. So starting underneath, so anything below 18 inches, I basically feel exactly the same. Ground bait, micros, exactly the same sort of scenario. It more comes down to your rig choice. So a bit more of a condensed flow, a 4B14 and a 4B12. And basically I'd have two rigs, so I'd have one sort of as tight into the bank I could go, I could go. so I won't go any sort of anything below 8, eight to 12 inch because I don't think the carp feels safe. 
So I'd have one in that sort of depth and then one in sort of me perfect depth, which would be sort of like 18 inches, two foot. And basically I'll try and catch them tight. If I can't catch them, I'll come out into me sort of 18 inches, two foot rig and try and catch them there. So that sort of explains what I do in, in them situations. Now, anything over two and a half foot, this is where things have to change. Feeding ground meat loses, loses its effectiveness. Now, you're probably thinking, well, why would it lose its effectiveness? Now, it's due to the weight of the bait. Because it's a very light bait, ground bait will actually spread. So the deeper it is, the more it will spread when fed loose. Now, you can say, well, why not feed it in a ball web? But it just doesn't seem the same. Now, what I'd actually do is I actually move over to micro pellets. Now, micro pellets are a nice, attractive bait, but they've got the weight in them as well. So if, if needs to be, I can soak them and I can make them as heavy as I can. But another important bait to fish with that, again, is a heavy bait. So I fish it in combination with sweet corn. Now, the, the sweet corn is a very heavy bait. So when I feed that in that sort of depth of water, it's going to sink nice and fast to the bottom. And it's going to cut down foul hookers. So them two has served me really well in the past when I've got them deep margin situations. Now, again, if you fed something like your maggots, because they're a light bait, they're going to wash everywhere. And this is what causes foul hookers. So the deeper the water, the heavier the bait, and that will catch you more carp. So hopefully this video sort of described how I fish margins, what I do in certain scenarios, and what I'm looking for. So I hope you enjoyed it. Subscribe to the New Fish YouTube channel. Thanks for watching.